Binkies can be wonderful and very, very useful. But now you've got a kid who's hopelessly addicted to the binky and it's time to kick the habit. Let me help. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to talk you through some ways to make the process of getting rid of the binky go a little more smoothly. Children use pacifiers for two main reasons. One, they use them as a sleep crutch um, or as a sleep prop to help them fall asleep. And two, they use them to help them feel more emotionally calm during the day. I think it's best to tackle these two issues separately. And I would tackle the using the binky as an emotional crutch first. So, Whenever you're offering a binky to a kid, you want to offer it as little as possible. And let's say you have a child right now who's using a binky all day long. Bit by bit, I wanna ask you to reduce that. So ask them to give you the binky when they're, when they're done. Don't clip it onto their outfit so that it's with them all the time so they can always put it back in because then they're just putting it back in as a habit as opposed to really needing to be emotionally soothed. So let's say they're really upset. They might want the binky at that time. But then when they're calm again, you wanna make sure that binky comes back away. So you should be in charge of the binky, you keep it with you, and don't let them use it all day long because it's going to make them reliant on it to keep their emotions in check. So bit by bit, you wanna just slowly reduce that until your child is only using a pacifier for nap time and bedtime. So now let's say your child is only using pacifiers at nap time and bedtime. How are we gonna tr transition away from that? The first question is, when do you want to transition away from it? When is the right time? First thing is, you don't want to take away a pacifier during any other transition. So let's say your child is moving from a crib to a bed. Don't take away the pacifier at that time. Or let's say your child has a new sibling. Don't take away the pacifier at that time. Make it at a time when things are stable and calm in your child's life, nothing else is going on, then just tackle getting rid of the pacifier because it's hard and it's emotionally distressing for them. You wanna keep as few of those emotionally upsetting things at once. Next, if they're asking for the pacifier all night long, if they're crying in the middle of the night for the pacifier, that might be a good time to get rid of it because what it's telling you is that the pacifier is disrupting their sleep more than it's helping. Babies and children will want whatever they had to fall asleep in the middle of the night. So if they fell asleep with a pacifier or a nightlight or whatever it is that they fell asleep with, that's what they're going to want when they wake up slightly in the middle of the night. And that is what's happening with your child if they are crying in the middle of the night for a pacifier over and over. So if that's happening, it's time to ditch the binky. Beyond that, what's the right age window to get rid of a binky? I actually have read hundreds of conversations and uh, input from moms who talked about their experiences getting rid of a pacifier. And I found that there were some trends that you would notice as you would go through these stories over and over. The moms whose children dropped the pacifier before age one had a pretty smooth time. And then the ones who tried it a little later with a different technique, like at age one and a half to two, seem to do okay. The ones who tried to ditch the pacifier between age one to one and a half actually, I think, um, tended to have the most trouble. And I'll talk you through why. So before age one, the children have very short-term memories and they don't really understand a lot of cause and effect. So let's say your child is waking up in the middle of the night for the pacifier. This is the case with my daughter before she was age one. They don't know why they're upset. They just know that they're uncomfortable. They have a sleep prop association. If you are able to help get them through that or get rid of it and get them through that discomfort for two or three nights, they forget about it entirely. They can't remember what they were attached to. And it's actually a pretty quick transition out of it. After that, when they get old enough to remember things for longer, but not to be able articulate, to articulate or understand what's happening, then they get really upset because they can remember their binky, but they can't really talk to you very clearly about it. So that can actually be kind of a tough time. So then you might want to wait until your baby can understand a little bit more, your toddler can understand what you're saying a bit more, and then you can explain to them why their binky is... Uh, is gone or why it's time to be all done with their binky. And then they do better with those transitions. And those moms are the ones who did things like use a binky fairy or maybe exchange pacifiers for toys uh, or a prize when they got rid of their pacifier. So you kind of need a different technique for when your child is slightly older. 
So once again, when your child is before the age of one, it's just a sleep prop. You need to comfort them maybe with a different sleep prop or hold them more or come snuggle them more for the first, you know, two or three nights when they are upset that they don't have their pacifier and then it goes away. Then they'll won't remember it anymore and you kind of have three rough nights and then it's done. For an older child, you need to tell them why the pacifier is going away. And for an older child, they no longer really have the need to suck. It's just a habit. It's a bad habit like, honestly, like smoking cigarettes or chewing gum. It's a habit. It's a physical thing that they're doing all the time. So in order to get them through that, you got to explain to them first what's going to happen. Okay, you're too old for a pacifier now. We're going to get rid of the binkies or maybe we've lost them or whatever the reason is, but then you kind of want to quit cold turkey because it's much harder to quit and then go back. <laughs> so then what you say is, okay, we're going to be through with the pacifiers and then you need to give them an explanation as to what's happening. One of my favorite ideas that I ran across and I really actually wanted to do this with my two year old. I had read from a mom who had taken the pacifier and this is kind of a play on the idea that a lot of moms use where you exchange the pacifier for a toy. And she had taken the pacifier to a Build-A-Bear and they had assembled a Build-A-Bear with the pacifier inside. And then the Build-A-Bear then became the toy that was the gift as getting rid of the pacifier. I actually really wanted to do this for my daughter. Uh, and when we were in California at the Build-A-Bear was closed, it was during COVID. <laughs> so we didn't get to do it. Uh, but that was a great idea. So it, ultimately we just told my daughter, which was the truth that we had eventually lost the last one, but then you're offering her a clear explanation as to what's happening and that it's time to be through with the pacifiers and that they're no longer available. So you then need to be more comforting to them, understand that it's distressing and hard to get through that. And then even at age two, it shouldn't take more than a week or so for them to transition past that point. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it really helpful. I would love to hear in the comments how your transition away from a pacifier goes with your child. And uh, I hope you subscribe to our channel for more of our parenting tips and tricks.